You know, I remember when I first heard about the USL Super League, the new women's professional soccer league that will officially share the top of the pyramid with the NWSL. I remember thinking, wow, that's interesting. Soccer wars are now spilling over to the women's side. And once again, USL is a part of it. I know people want an open pyramid with full promotion and relegation, and this ain't that. Listen, if you are one of those people who are dying to see ProRel in this country, I suggest you stop holding your breath because it's probably not going to happen. Or if it does, it ain't going to be for a long time. So with all that being said, I know it is really weird for two leagues to share the top spot of the pyramid. But I actually think that competition between two leagues is a good thing. Pressure makes diamonds. And if the NWSL starts to feel the heat from the USL Super League, then they'll be forced to keep getting better. That's why even though I'm a die-hard MLS fan, I'm still rooting for the USL and even <laughs> NISA to keep improving as well. But, okay, not gonna lie. After the initial announcement, I sort of forgot about the USL Super League and just went about my business. You know, like watching the fire completely fucking suck for another season. But then I saw a tweet about the Charlotte USL Super League team hiring a head coach. Okay, before I forget, can we all just admit that the name USL Super League is a dumb name? I mean, not that that has anything to do with anything and not that I should really care about it, but it's like, really? USL Super League? Like after the debacle of the European Super League, I would think USL would want to change that name ASAP, but they haven't yet. And it's just like, what are you waiting for? Anyways, after I saw that Charlotte hired Philip Poole as their head coach, I started looking back into the USL Super League again. And after about 20 minutes of researching, I came to the conclusion, yeah, the NWSL has nothing to worry about. No, but for real, I think the Super League is in for a rude awakening. Like as it stands right now, I do not have a ton of faith in this league. But before I bring up my concerns of the USL Super League, let's talk about something that might actually work. And that is its schedule, as they will be running an August to May schedule. You guys might already know my opinion on the idea of MLS trying a winter schedule. I think it's fucking stupid. But actually, it might work here. Because the majority of the eight teams are in the South. Charlotte, Dallas, Fort Lauderdale, Lexington, Tampa Bay, Washington, D.C., Spokane, Washington, and Brooklyn. The only markets where it's going to be extra chilly in this first season is Spokane and Brooklyn. And I think you can work around that. And because it's a winter schedule, USL Super League won't be competing at the same time as the NWSL. This could be a good thing because people who are already diehard NWSL supporters may actually give the USL Super League a chance simply because it's not on at the same time as the NWSL. Now, if they ever have a Women's US Open Cup, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do that. It kind of seems inevitable that one league will be playing some of their cup matches in the offseason, which isn't exactly ideal. Now, here's my concern. We are less than seven months away from the start of the inaugural season, and only three teams have released their branding, that being the Tampa Bay Sun FC, Spokane Zephyr FC, who are affiliated with Spokane Velocity at the USL1, and Lexington SC, who share the same name as the men's team, also in USL1. As of right now, only four teams have a head coach, and only six teams have a place to play. Like, that's what I'm wondering about. How can this league already be granted Division I status when a fourth of their teams don't even know where they're going to be playing. I mean, what if the best stadium option for Dallas or DC doesn't hit the 5,000 seat requirement for holding Division One status? But wait, is that requirement real? Or is it just a load of BS? Because it's already been confirmed that Fort Lauderdale will be playing their home games at the training facility of Nova Southeastern University, which only seats 2,000 people. And let's not forget about Tampa Bay. They're playing their home games at a fucking high school. I know that high school holds 5,000 people, so technically it does fall under the requirements. But even still, a top division team playing their home games at a high school? What? Now, I know all this will eventually be resolved. I know that all the teams will eventually have a name and a place to play. So 
what's the big deal? Why am I freaking out about this? Well, optically, it just doesn't look great. Like these next seven months are gonna go by quick. I hope a plan is in place. Also, they're not doing great at the social media game. They went from May 2023 to January 2024 without a single tweet. I know Twitter is a cesspool full of trolls and dumb people, but it's a cesspool that companies absolutely need to take advantage of because it's the quickest source of news, and for some people, it's the only source of news. Like, even if you don't have any update to give us, at least do a photo shoot or like a hype video or something. Because like I said, I completely forgot about the USL Super League because after the initial announcement, there was nothing. I mean, if you're going to compete with the NWSL, a league with an 11-year head start, and by far, by like a million miles far, the most successful women's soccer league the United States has ever seen, uh, I gotta see some more. The NWSL survived the difficult first years when they were paying their players peanuts and just trying to stay afloat. Now, they've got the facilities, they've got the stars, they've got the fans, and they've got the money. Why isn't Minnesota Aurora in the Super League? In their first two years in the USLW League, which, oh, okay, this is going to get confusing. If you don't already know, I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. So the USL Super League is going to share the top spot of the pyramid with the NWSL. The USLW League is a pre-professional league that's going to sit at the fourth tier of the pyramid, which is a little weird considering tiers two and three are currently vacant. The USLW League has 81 teams across 10 divisions. Minnesota Aurora stands out not just because of their beautiful crest. <laughs> but also because they already have a 6,000 seat stadium that sells really well. They packed the place in the first ever W League final in 2021. Minnesota Aurora also stated intentions of joining either the USL Super League or possibly NWSL, which like, please, USL, don't blow this. You have a great opportunity here with Minnesota. Figure it out. This is the perfect candidate for your league. Oh, and what about Racing Louisville and North Carolina Courage, two teams with USL affiliates that are currently playing in the NWSL? These are two perfect candidates for the Super League. Ideally, you'd want them to leave the NWSL to play in the USL Super League, but what if they don't want to leave the NWSL? Oy vey, this is going to get messy. Like, what if they don't want to leave playing at soccer-specific stadiums for playing at high schools? What's USL as a whole going to be able to do about it? Can they force teams that are affiliated with USL to play in the designated USL Women's League? Perhaps the best thing going for the USL Super League is that unlike the NWSL, they don't currently have a history of hiring, well, let's just say coaches and higher-ups that make questionable moral decisions. A few more of those blunders by the NWSL and maybe players will be fed up enough and say, screw it, I'm moving leagues. If the USL Super League doesn't put up a respectable product in year one, then fans are going to be tough to come by. Crazy prediction here, but I don't think the USL Super League is going to bring in as many national team stars. So the star power definitely isn't going to be there. And also, we just need to acknowledge the fact that we're going to be going from 14 Division I women's teams to 22 Division I women's teams. Like, that's a lot of teams right there. The talent level, I think it's safe to say, might get a little diluted at that point. And that dilution is far more likely to be felt in the USL Super League versus the NWSL. Now, I know, I have been skeptical of things before in the past and it's completely blown up in my face. I mean, just look at the what's the deal with Nashville SC video. Like, considering how well Nashville's doing, I look like a complete moron for making it. I hope this video makes me look like a moron. I hope that Amanda Vandervoort and the rest of the USL Super League absolutely crush it. But I'm just saying, they've got an extremely difficult uphill battle to climb and they're not exactly off to the fastest start now. And it's really hard to start any professional sports league in this country. It is doubly hard to start a women's professional sports league. And if I had to predict, I would say the USL Super League is going to really struggle.
But again, I hope I'm wrong.